But you could tell that Mick is not the type of artist that lets a, a weak verse go on a record. Nah. He's definitely the guy that's calling you at 3 a.m. Like, yo, I got to re-record that. Or, <laughs> yo, don't put my verse on the project. Because you could yeah. tell bar for bar, he really cares about how he's crafting it. And the thing about Mick is that, like I said before, the bar density, like every bar is heavy. It means something to the project. And that's something I will give him credit for. It's mind boggling. Now, I want to cut to the report card. It's obvious that we all enjoyed the album. I don't think anyone here has had some true gripes. We, we, we did nitpick and we tried to pull some things out of it. I'll just go right off the bat and say I'm going to give him an eight flat. I think Mick Jenkins is a phenomenal rapper. Um, after hearing his previous body of work, he's definitely matured and he's grown to this point right now. I'm actually very happy that the world has caught him in this phase in his career because he's developed and he's ready to go. Right. But The Waters is a concept album that felt a little heavy handed at times and it got dull. Hmm. There were times in the album that I was bored. I'm not going to lie. Or I felt like I had listeners fatigue and I just had to cut it off and get back to doing what I was doing. And it's not clutter and distracting like Alex Wiley and Rat King. It's just a very muddled, reverb heavy sound of production that, you know, if you're not paying attention to it and you're not sitting around waiting for the next best line, it's something that I could turn off and just kind of like walk away from and I'll be okay with that. But I do enjoy listening to his rap set from a rap standpoint and as a lyricist and as someone who cares about the craft. And I'm giving him an eight. To me, that's a phenomenal score, but I do want to point out that, you know, I have those small critiques, and that's what shaves off a couple points from the project. Uh, I gave it an 8.7, and, you know, I really wanted to give it a 9. Uh, you know, it was that good for me that, you know, I don't I don't give out 9s easily. I was very surprised at how good this was, and I think what brought it down, just those point three points, was, you know, it did sonically sound like it was the whole song all the way through, and then Jerome just at the end really really threw me off and threw me for a loop and i didn't i don't know i had to take those point three points off but you know i was i really like this album you know and while it is very lyric heavy and it's sometimes hard to listen to i want to go back and just keep on re-listening and re-listening which is very rare well going off the top of the bat too uh it's an 8.7 and um it, it was just a situation where i truly enjoyed it from the first song down to the second last song and Jerome it, was the one if we would have just cut it out Jerome was your fine. Puerto Rican judo <laughs> yeah it was it was uh, at the same time like uh, Mr. Producer said I don't give out nines nines are only from now on I want to state this nines are only when you're breaking ground and you're truly doing something different you're reaching classic stages when you reach nine and that wasn't even though we held a project that was cohesively great it, it just had it I had to take those points off now you mentioned something as an artist earlier off air you said that this is the kind of artist that you'd love to work with what 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 is it about him i don't think you've said that about a lot of other no people. i haven't said that a lot about practically anybody his music sonically sounds where i could live in that that's first and foremost from a production standpoint from a production standpoint and he had a multitude of producers it seems like they came together yeah. for the same sound he has status selector and which is the most prominent one yeah them event. people the young man who worked on alex wiley's project right he had a lot of different producers and it's funny that they came together for an album that sounds so similar i appreciate that he has thought provoking but he doesn't wag the finger uh asia second to last this was your pick yes. are you happy with what you, what, what your pick was extremely happy and why I'm just going to continue like everyone. I'm going to start off with my grade. I gave it an 8.9. Nice. I wanted to give is it a 9. Is that the highest score you've given so far? Yes. So is this one of your favorite albums of the year? Yes. It's one of my favorite albums of the year. I was completely taken aback because I didn't know what to really go into when listening. You know, I hadn't really heard of this guy before. You know, he's he's young. He's about my age. And I was just like, you know, I really didn't know what to go into or what I was expecting. But, like, this this is an album that, like you said, I feel like, you know, the whole listener's fatigue, I love the fact that I had listener's fatigue when I was listening to this album. I yeah. just kept listening to it over and over. And, you know, the funny thing is, you know, like certain tracks, I kept listening to 514 Martyrs over and over again. And I kept getting pissed off because Jerome would come on after it. And I would always forget to You can stop delete that after. from your iTunes. Yeah, no, nah, I was listening to it on Spotify. So I would always... You could create a playlist and make sure it doesn't make that playlist. <laughs> yeah. But no, like, it's just, you know... They call this, it the winner's version. Yeah. But but this, like, it was just like, I was just wrestling with it the whole time. And I'm just like, okay, what is going on here? And I just, I love that, you know, like, you know, and, you know, not to, you know, take shots at you. But, you know, when I was listening to the Rat King album, I had the exact opposite feeling. 
and this you know i also had listeners fatigue listening to that but for the wrong reasons and i felt like i had it for the right reasons with this one i will say and this is certainly not me backpedaling but i probably haven't heard the album enough i listened to it for two weeks straight so yeah i mean i believe that but you know it's similarity in sound throughout the entire project something that i felt like you couldn't cure even if you heard it a million times Majid, I want to get to you. It's funny you brought up the wrestling, that you were wrestling with these records. His line about being a wrestler and him being Mick Foley. Oh, yeah. And all he sees is AC Slater's. AC Slater was a wrestler. Yes. And Saved by the Bell. Yes. Wow. Amateurs. Wow. Amateur wrestler. Faker. So that's what he sees. Phenomenal. Again, another phenomenal Mm -hmm. line. Majid. I'm about to jump out the window with this one. I gave it a 9.5. Whoa! Wow! Yeah, you know. Whoa! I was to this album. I've been I've been living with this album for probably like two weeks. All right, two nice. weeks. So you, just you know, now you. she just told me it's on Spotify. It's about to go on for a little bit more, right? But no, conceptually, the album is near perfect. I love the waters concept. It's something that nobody's ever alluded to. Um, he brings me that feeling of when I first got put on Kendrick Lamar. I was like, wait, what is this? You know, it's like that kind of Eureka feeling. I felt like he was what J Electronica should be doing right now. I mean, Jay Electronic is supposed to be that guy that's speaking on what we're going to do. He gave us the Twitter rant, but where's the music? He actually kind of looks like Jay Electronica. And in a year where it's kind of like lackluster musically, you know, I don't think we've had like, it's like we have all these albums this year and we're like, yeah, that album was dope. That album was dope. But when you get something like this, it's like, all right, now that's a real good album. And I didn't have that this year at all. Like, this is when I finally got it. I was like, okay, now this is a good good, good album. So no knock to anybody that I might have spoke on. I said your album was dope before, <clears throat> Schoolboy Q. But this was the album of the, um, of the year, year so far. So far. Wow. And I give it a 9.5. A 9.5. Asia is glowing right now. It, it, it is very difficult for you to hide your emotions. <laughs> it's like she is she is literally a book the minute that she has an emotion that's uncontrollable. That's true. I, I'm very happy to hear that. Like I, I really wanted to give it a nine, but I just hated Jerome. You guys, just, uh, you, you, Majid, it's funny. You and Majid have a great friendship outside of the, the yeah. radio station, but you guys rarely see eye to eye on a lot of music. Yeah, he's, he's, he's kind of weird, but... <laughs> <laughs> 90.3 The Core, The Ether Report. We'll be back next week. Panel, thank you for joining me. Listeners, thank you for staying tuned in. We're out of here.